So you have learned how to create generic classes. Now in this generic class, we have a couple of generic methods, add and get. But we can also declare a generic method inside a non-generic class. Let me show you. So let's add a new class to this package. We're going to call it utils. This class is going to have a bunch of utility methods. Now, let's say we want to get the maximum of two values. So here we can add a public method. We make it static so we don't have to create an instance of the utils class. This is a common convention for declaring utility methods. We make them static. Now we return an integer. We call the method max and give it two parameters, first and second. Here we can use the ternary operator to return the maximum of these two values. So we return, here we have a Boolean expression. If first is greater than the second, we return first, otherwise we return second. Pretty simple, right? Now, we want to make this method generic. So instead of getting two integers and returning an integer, you want to be able to work with different types of objects. Now, we don't necessarily have to make this class generic. We can declare a generic method inside a non-generic class. Let me show you. So just before the return type, we add the generic type parameter, okay? Now we replace all these integers with T. So here's the return type and the two parameters. We have a compilation error because we cannot apply the comparison operator between objects of type T. We can only apply it to numbers and characters. So how can we compare these two objects? Well, you learn about the comparable interface in the last video. So here we can tell the Java compiler that this T is an object that implements the comparable interface. How can we do that? We type extend comparable of T. So we're applying a constraint. Now, when we type first dot, we see that this object has a method called compare to, which takes an object of type T. So we can compare first with second. If it's less than zero, then we're going to return second. Otherwise, we're going to return first. So this is one application of the compare to method. Now let's test this method. So back to the main class. Here we type utils dot. We call the max method. Now look at the type of this parameter. It's T. Because at this point, the Java compiler doesn't know if we're going to pass an integer, a character, a string, a user object, or what. Now, the moment I pass a value here, let's say one, the Java compiler knows this is an integer, so it wraps it inside the integer class, and it knows that the second parameter should also be an integer. So I cannot pass a character or a string here. This is the benefit of using generics. Instead of adding two parameters of type object, we use a generic method, okay? Now, back in the main class. So let's pass three. This will return the max. We store it here and then print it on the console. So the max is three. Now we can also pass two user objects. So let's say one user with 10 points and another user with 20 points. Obviously, the return type of this method is now going to be a user object. So and we print it. We get this long string, which includes the fully qualified name of the class, followed by an at sign, and then a hash code. I talked about this in the previous parts of this series. So when we pass an object to the print line method, the to string method on that object gets called. So that long string that you saw returns from the default implementation of the to string method. To solve this problem, we go back to the user class and overwrite the two string method. So first we apply the overwrite annotation. We're telling the Java compiler that we're overwriting one of the methods inherited from the base class. And then we type public string to string. Yeah, here we can return a simple string like this. Points equals plus points. Now let's run the program. So you can see that the user with 20 points is the maximum of these two user objects.